Oh, hello everybody. I'm Pastor Steve. I'm back after being gone for a while. I've, uh, I've missed you. I'm hoping that we, you're remembering where we are in Job. We're gonna, we're still studying the book of Job and we're listening to these four old men argue and complain to each other about what's going on. And uh, we're, they're kind of going through three rounds of discussions. We are finishing up the second one, gonna start the third. And I'm gonna just kind of back up a little bit in chapter 20 where Zophar, and he makes a response to Job and he says, you know, you deserve what you get. He says, um, I got a reply because I'm greatly disturbed. This is Zophar. He says, I had to endure your insults, but now my spirit prompts me to reply. Don't you realize that from the beginning of time, the wicked have been short-lived? He's, he's implying that, Job, you're just a wicked, wicked man. You deserve what you get, and this is what's happening. He's going to finish up this little dissertation of his, and he says, uh, this is the reward that God gives the wicked. It is the inheritance decreed by God. And what is that? You're going to be punished. You're, things are going to crash down on you, and you deserve what you get, Job. So take that. Now, we're going to start in 21. This is where we are. You get an idea of what's been going on. These four old men are bickering among themselves. And I can say that because I'm an old man, okay? So he says, um, Job says, I'm going to, he says, I want you to listen closely to what I'm saying. That's one cons consolation you can give me. Bear with me and let me speak. After I have spoken, you may resume mocking me and making fun of me and so forth. He says, but remember, my complaint is with God, not with people. My problem isn't with you. My problem is with God. God, why are you letting this happen to me? I'm a decent man. I've been successful. I've done everything. I've lived a righteous life. And we know that from reading the first two chapters that Job was right in saying, what's going on here? Why am I being beat up so? And you'd have to wonder, you know, we, we really don't think that God is going to punish us now, right now. And, but in this era, this was a long, long time ago before the, the teachings of Jesus Christ was on the books. And they felt that if you live a wicked life, you're going to be punished by God. Well, Job says, I'm not buying into this. He says, why do the wicked thrive so long? Let me see if I can find a couple quotes. Here it is in verse 7 in chapter 21. He says, why do the wicked prosper growing old and powerful? If that's so, so far, if that's the truth, why are they prospering? They spend their days in prosperity. Then they go down to the grave in peace. And they say to God, go away. We want no part of you or, no, or any of your ways. Who is the Almighty and why should we obey him? What good will it do us to pray? Listen, these people are the wicked that Job's friends are describing him as being. And Job is saying, that's not me and I don't want any part of that. He says, they think their prosperity is of their own doing, but I will have nothing to do with that kind of think thinking. That is Job speaking. He says, I'm not going to have any part of that. That's not me. I love the Lord and I'm going to follow him. And he says, I just don't understand why he's treating me this way. Now, you and I, we know why God is letting this happen to him. Because he's showing what an upstanding, strong, righteous man Job is. But Job doesn't know that. And so Job is uh, complaining to God. Why are you letting this happen? He says, Yet the light of the wicked never seemed to be extinguished. He's going on to say that the wicked haven't made, they're doing well, and I don't want any part of that kind of life. I've been a righteous man, and I've been successful. I've had all these cows, and not cows, donkeys and camels and sheep. And he said, I have all these things. And all of a sudden, they've been taking away, and God had let it happen. He says, so the wicked, they prosper. It seems that it never extinguished, is extinguished. He says, let them see their destruction with their own eyes. Let them drink deeply with the anger of the Almighty. In other words, they're talking now about the wicked being punished. And they says, well, if the wicked aren't punished in this lifetime, at least their children will be punished and their offspring will be punished. And, and Job said, well, no, 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 let not think that way. Let them see the destruction they've made with their own eyes. Let them drink deeply of the anger of the Almighty. 
He said, but who can teach a lesson to God? Now that's an interesting question, but who can teach a lesson to God? Since he judges even the most powerful, one person dies in prosperity and completely comfortable and secure, the picture of good health and vigorous and fit. Another person dies in bitter poverty, never having tasted the good life. Listen to this. This is something that Jesus kind of made a line to. He says, but both are buried in the same dust. Both eat the same, are eaten by the same maggots. That's like the sun shines on the good and the evil. The um, rain falls on the wicked and the prosperous. It's the truth is, everything happens to us all, but things are, are moved around that some of us succeed and some of us don't. And a lot of that has to do with the faith, the hope that you have and what God has planted in us. God will say, you can do this. Do not quit, do not give up, just keep working forward. But some people say, I quit, I can't do it. This is all God's fault and he's, he, I'm doomed. Well, we're gonna go on. Um, this is still Job speaking. He says, even pe evil people are spared in times of calamity and they are allowed to escape their disasters. Things happen to them, the evil, and, and Job was looking at this. There are evil people who are making it, they're doing well, they're spared, they, their kids grow, they're prosperous, everything is going right for them. Why is this happening to me, Lord? Well, his friends are saying, this is happening to you, Job, because you are a rotten human being. I um, question that, so, the Job finishes up and says, how can you, your empty cliches comfort me? All your expl explanations are lies. So Job is saying, I, li I hear what you're saying. It's not true. And you haven't done a thing to comfort me. And that's what friends are. And you guys are old friends of mine. And this is the way you treat me. You know, and I think about lessons in the Bible then in, in the New Testament, way after this has gone place, where Jesus says, why do you try to remove a speck from your friend's eye when you have a plank in yours? These friends of his are looking at him and saying, you're a bad guy and let me show you what we can do and how you're gonna do this. And the Bible taught us, because Christ has been here and taught us, that don't be trying to remove a splinter from your friend's eye when you have a plank in your own. You know, and judge not as you wanna be judged. Do unto others if you want them to do unto you. There are lessons that are, lot, are taught that these three friends of Job seems to have, well, they can't, they can't forget something you never knew, but they don't know this. They're looking at it as God is paying you what you duly deserve. So now Eliphaz is gonna give the third response to what Job just said. Now Eliphaz is the first speaker. There are three friends and Eliphaz is the very first. And he says, here's Eliphaz saying, can a person do anything to help God? Can even a wise person be helpful to him? To me, that's a silly question because I believe we serve God and the way we serve God is that we help. When He says, when you do the least of these from, for the least of mine, you are doing it for me. That's serving God. That's helping God. God has the power, we know that, to say, poof, and it's done. The sea's calm and we can walk on water. But he turns to his followers, the people that he teaches, the people that listen to his word and say, you do that for the least of mine and you're doing it for me. In other words, I'm turning to you to help the people in need. And that's our responsibility as Christians, dealing with brothers and sisters, friend, people that we love. And what do we say? We love our enemies because even sinners love the people that love them. So we need to practice on loving each other and to being helpful to each other. And when you're helpful to each other, let me see what it says. We help God. Because even a wise person, can even a wise person be helpful? Can a person do anything to help God? Yes, we can. And I just explained, we can serve other people. Because Jesus himself said, I didn't come here to be served. I came here to serve. But these gentlemen do not have the luxury of knowing Jesus Christ and his words. So I digress a bit. Then he goes on and he says, is it because you're so pious that he accuses you for being, brings judgment against you? No, it's because you're of your wickedness. There is no limit to your sins. 
This is Job's friend talking, He's being very sarcastic. Is it because you're so pious that he accuses you? You're such a good guy. Is that right, Job? And he brings judgment against you? No, it's because you're wickedness and there's no limit to your sins. And he goes on and says, God is so great, higher than the heavens, higher than the farthest stars. Maybe the, maybe the clouds are in the way and he can't see, look down here and see what's going on. This is a guy who is being a little, um, I don't know, which is blasphemy? I, I don't know what, how to really term that other than saying that's a silly statement. Okay, and a number of these statements that we have gone through for the last um, several weeks have been just silly statements that these guys have made because they are picking on Job. Why? I have no idea. Maybe we'll find out later, but I have a feeling that we're, we're finding out is that when you assume things that aren't absolutely true, you assume you know, you are making a terrible mistake for you and for the friend that you're assuming things of. And um, I just let it go at that. You want to know absolute facts when you speak and not assuming things that aren't in evidence. That's a lawyer's term, I think. Facts are not in evidence. But anyway, let us go on here. I come here in chapter, we're in chapter 22, verse 21. He says, submit to God. Now this is good advice here, and it's funny that uh, it would come up now. Submit to God and you will have peace. Now that's a good advice to have peace. We all wanna have peace in our life. So submit to God and you will have peace. And then things will go well for you. If you have peace and you submit to God, things will go well to you. Listen to his instructions and store them in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. So clean up your life, Job, straighten yourself up. If you give up on your lust for money and throw your gold, your precious gold into the river, the Almighty himself will be your treasure, and he will be your precious silver. Then you will take delight in the Almighty and look up to God. You will pray to him, and he will hear you, and you will fulfill your vows to him. You will succeed in whatever you choose to do. The light that will shine on the road ahead of you, if people are in trouble and you say, help them, he will help them. Listen to this. Even sinners will be rescued. They will be rescued because your hands are pure. Now, that is probably the wisest statement. It's, good. it's a good sermon, in effect. He says, give in to the Lord. Follow his commands. And what does this say? How do you love the Lord? You follow his commands. He says, so love the Lord. He didn't say it in so many words, but listen to his instructions. Follow his commands and store them in your heart. No place else to put them. Live them. Out of the mouth comes a word from the heart. And here he is, he says, store these in your heart. And if you return to the Almighty, you will be restored, Job. You will be have your peace back, you'll have your life back, things will go good for you. So clean up your life. And we all try to do that. But what we need to have to have to make that happen is we're very hard pressed to do that on our own. We need to the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that's in us and says, we are going to work on you and you're gonna follow my leadings by the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God, which is in him. And that's what he's saying. And if you give up on his, give up your lust for money and throw your precious gold into the river, what does it say? How does it, let me think. It's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man to fall, get into heaven. Well, I think that's what he's saying. And, and they're, they're talking lessons that we've learned growing up, listening to the, the value that is in the New Testament scriptures. But here we are listening to Job being preached to by his friends that are calling him just bad. And Job isn't buying into it because he doesn't know what's going on. Like we've had the, the privilege of reading the first two chapters. We know what's going on. So uh, then he says, the Almighty himself will be your treasure. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all this will be added to you. That's basically what he's saying here. And then you will delight in the Almighty and look up to God, and you will pray to him, and will, he'll hear you. He'll answer our prayers. He hears our prayers, and he will answer them. Ask, and you will be heard. You know? Well, how's it going? Let's see. Ask, 
and you will be answered. Seek and you will find and knock and the door will be open. That's what he says. Pray to him and he'll hear you. You will succeed in whatever you choose to do and the light will shine on the road ahead of you. If people are in trouble and you say, help them, God will help because he listens and he wants to be our savior and he wants to help you. Why? Because he loves us, people. He loves us like his own children because we are. And I always, I tell my people that I talk to them, I says, God loves you and me like we love our children on steroids. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? Just beyond control, just way above anything you and I can imagine. He loves us that much. Why? Because we are his children. And the only thing I can say to identify with that is how much we love our own children. And that's nothing compared to God's love for us. So we can go forward with that. Now, Job is going to have to reply to this. And he's going to say, let me, let me see if I can start. He says, my complaint still is a bitter one. Nope. He would give me a fair hearing. I want God to give me a fair hearing. He says, I've, I've gone through all this. I want this fair hearing. But he knows where I'm going. And when he tests me, I will come out of it as pure as gold. For I have stayed in the God's path. I have followed his ways, not turning aside. Job is saying, and I kind of, from what we've read, he has not cursed God. Remember his wife said, just curse God and die. Well, he hasn't cursed God. He said, I've done everything I'm supposed to do. I've followed him. I don't know. I don't understand. And understand that would be a very trying time in our life, in anybody's life. And Job, who is successful, who has looked up in the community, a righteous man, and all of a sudden, nobody's listening. They don't like him. He's, his friends have turned on him. And he says, why have I lost everything I had? And I sometimes when I drive down the road, I look at a homeless guy living out there in a tent by the railroad tracks. And I go, man, I wonder if that's how Job felt. You know, it's, it's a little sad. He says um, in verse 12 of chapter 23, he says, I have not departed from his commands, but have treasured his words more than my daily food. Whatever he wants me to do, he does. So he will do to me whatever he has planned he controls my destiny. No wonder I am so terrified in his presence. When I think of it, terror grips me. You know, they say the fear of the Lord is, is the beginning of wisdom. And the fear of the Lord basically is the love of God, the understanding the awesomeness of God, the understanding the power of God, understanding that he created everything. He created you and me. He created our bodies. Just when you understand that and you, you love him, you go, wow. Thank you. We know something. And what we know? That God is on our side and God is for us. And we turn to him all the time and we ask and he will answer. So he says, when I think of all this, terror grips me. And I understand that thought. God has made me sick at heart. The Almighty has terrified me. Darkness is all around me, thick, impenetrable, and darkness is everywhere. Job says, I'm just, I've been defeated. I am beat, but I'm not leaving the straight and narrow. I'm going to continue to follow God as long as I draw breath. Now, I think those are good words for us to think about. And when we go away, think about that we are following God. We follow his commands. That's how we show that we love him. And we continue to love him because he first loved us. And with that in mind, I'm going to close on to, and we'll come back again next week. And we'll start in chapter 24. But let me just say a, a brief prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you for the many blessings you've bestowed upon us. And we're a time of trouble in our, in our community, in our nation, with a pandemic, with election problems, with just everything that's going on out there, Father. We turn to you for the peace that you give us. And we are, are experiencing this uncomfortableness as as Job did, but we are going to stay with you, we are going to follow you, and we are going to praise you because we know that you are in control because you are our foundation. You're the rock that we're built upon, and we have faith that you will 
control all of these events as they go on. And all things work for the good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody.